Hey, faith family. Welcome to the Beyond Sunday podcast at Calvary Bible, where we go beyond the Sunday sermon to explore some rabbit holes and to bring some biblical truths to the surface. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. Calvary Bible Church, welcome back to another episode of Beyond Sunday. Randy, good morning. We are just barely, good morning, we are barely beyond Sunday. We are. Because this is Monday morning. It's a Monday morning. Because you're leaving. I'm out of town the rest of this week. I hope you have a great time. Thank you. Yeah, I'm hoping Seven, to. eight hours or more? Nine. Uh, it's, a little, not 10, but the between mileage? nine and 10. Uh, 500 some miles. So you just. Close to 600, I think. Okay, then you're like going to my mom in Maine. Yeah. 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 yeah it's a haul. Because that's about 550, 560 up there. I love driving through Ohio. It's so much fun. Just a lot of flat, a lot of nothing, turnpike, a lot of cops. It's got to be easier than going up through New England, though, as far as traffic-wise. Really? Oh, yeah. No, not a lot of traffic. Yeah, New England is it's horrible boring. traffic-wise. Oh, yeah. You rarely get up through there without some snag issue somewhere. No. Whew. No, we don't face a lot of traffic, good. just distance. I hope you have so, a good time. Yeah. yeah. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Hope you can eat something, some kind of a bird, mm-hmm. maybe. Go turkeys. Quail. Quail. Grouse. Duck. Woodcock. Pheasant. Mm-hmm. We could name a bunch. We could. Uh, Ostrich. S- speaking of birds, <laughs> uh, what did the duck say when you bought chapstick? How about that segue? That, that wasn't is, even, that that wasn't even planned. That is good. What did the duck, what did say, the duck when... say when you bought chapstick? Put it on my bill. Oh, that is so good. There you go. That was good. Thank you. Yeah, that wasn't even a Maddie? Maddie joke. Nope, nope, nope. Oh, just a good one. Just a plain old good joke. Uh, I couldn't expect to get another one. No. All right. So we are in Matthew chapter 16. Yes, we one are. One of the more well-known, mm. uh, debated, mm. hotly debated mm. um, right passages now. throughout church history. Mm-hmm. What in the world is going on? What is, what is Peter? And this is actually a very comforting passage for a lot of folks, mm-hmm. for myself, because you see Peter in the highest of highs and the lowest of lows, all within you know verses of each other, and uh, and you mentioned it yesterday, but yeah, like we all we've all yeah. been there. Yeah, Ben Delp. As I was walking out, I had a, some cello practice with some of the the younger ones, and uh, I'm walking out of the sanctuary, and Ben was up in the balcony still, um, and he hollered down. And he said, "That's." It's so good to see Peter like that because of the way I am, he said. And he, and he was mentioning all the, you know, the ups and downs that he has mm-hmm. in the spiritual life. Yeah, that's the way it is for us. It is. And it happens. Um, yeah, it happens to mm-hmm. the best of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, Peter being a great example. Yeah. Um, One minute doing really well and the next minute, oh boy. Yeah. Not so well. Yeah, get out of the way. Mm. So, uh, but Jesus starts off asking this question, these two mm-hmm. questions, right? Mm-hmm. First, who do people say the Son mm-hmm. of Man is? Verse and then, 13. Who do you say that I am? Uh, mm-hmm. Why are, why is that such an important question for us to grapple with? Yeah, I, I was thinking about, you know, when I ended those minutes, um, you know, trying to, to say, um, is my is my confession of his identity mm-hmm. you know in verse 13 son of man verse 16 peter you are the christ the son of, of the living god so son of man which i referenced to, back to uh, daniel, daniel 7. 7 and then uh, the christ mm-hmm. and then the son of the living god meaning he's god i th- i think the importance of that was and is that he is the king of the kingdom, which is bringing life to this world. So to a badly broken world, which we, we mention a lot, in a badly broken world, you have the king who comes and says, I'm bringing with me uh, the ruling power of God that can put this world back together again the way it was designed to be lived. And so it is it is the most critical question because of, of Jesus being the son of God, which mm-hmm. means... He's the creator, the sustainer. He'll be the creator of the new heavens and the new earth. He'll, you know, you can, uh, everything that Christianity is looking forward to, all the hope, uh, the defeat of death, for instance, which is important in this text, uh, that's all based upon Christ and his ability. So, but but I think for for you and for me, I mean, for us, you know, at this point, the three of us, mm-hmm. uh, 
this is this confession needs to drive the way I live. So I'm always trying to think about, you know, when I get up this morning, am I a worshiper? Mm -hmm. Am I worshiping this Savior, this my Messiah, my King, which means putting other would-be rulers out of my world? Um, Michelle and I had a great example of this this morning. We were doing our readings, and, and um, you know, one of the, 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 whatever chapter we read was about, you know, the tendency for us to replace God with other deities and... Um, that's that's not you know that's not living according to the confession so to say you are the Christ the son of the living god implies that i'm going to live that he is mm -hmm. my king and i'm going to serve him faithfully and that kind of stuff i don't know yeah. there's a lot we could do about that but yeah, it's critical so, right recognizing jesus's true identity for us right puts us in a place of a worshipper and there's times where we've got other things contending for mm. our worship so let's mm. make sure our our worship is rightly directed directed to him. Mm -hmm. um, but what then? What about like mm -hmm. for folks who do not worship Jesus as Lord? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we mm -hmm. talked about this being a, a supernatural mm -hmm. thing that the Father revealed. It's not flesh and yeah. blood. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but we even kind of talked about this a little bit with the the binding and loosening yeah. of of souls, right? Or the mm. gates of hell. Yeah. Um, so like, what are the implications for the, the lost? Like, is there any yeah. hope? What's our place in that? Yeah. Toward the end of that, you know, toward the end of that message, I did spend a minute addressing those that, you know, they, they don't, they don't have this as their confession. Mm -hmm. And, you know, probably, uh, pr you know, the strongest implication is that death, uh, Death will overtake them. Physical death, spiritual death will accompany that. And that is an eternity outside of the kingdom of heaven, which is, that mm -hmm. is just not, you know, uh, to, to use the wording of the ESV in 18, you know, the gates of hell. Once you enter through those gates of hell, you're there for eternity in the lake of fire, according mm -hmm. to the scripture. And that is a terrible plight for a human being. And there's no healing there. In other words, that's there's no opportunity for that individual without Christ to experience the new creation mm -hmm. for themselves and for their world and yeah. for their eternity. So that image, the gates of hell, is like in my uh, visualizing mm -hmm. of that. So you've got Sheol or hell, mm -hmm. right? And I'm imagining like this gravitational force that's like pulling people in. Uh, mm -hmm. to it or is it like they're already captives and you know the gospel comes in and pulls them out or is it am i just you know yeah i mean making a bigger deal than what yeah it, it's not uh, here it's not shit although uh here it's it's hades okay would be the closer noun i, I referred to i think the nasb translated a little differently and probably closer to the now to this greek now but the gates of hell here is is synonymous with um what did one one guy write i don't know if it was craig keener the threshold of death yeah still death. a threshold mm -hmm. you know the only the only reason i know that word is you know when you get married and you enter your home you carry your bride through the th you know, through threshold. the threshold across yeah. the threshold right but so I think I think what's happening here is uh, that death is assaulting the church. Death is the and that, and that's why I made reference to this quickly. First Corinthians fifteen, the last that's the final enemy that's to be conquered is death. Mm -hmm. So death is on the offensive against the people of God. Yeah, and that's that's I don't know whether your language was right, you know, as far as drawing them in, or yeah. I forget. But what what you have is an uh, this is an attack. Yeah, that that will not be victorious. So, mm -hmm. and I I have said maybe wrongly so. Like the gates are not an offensive structure, but the yeah. word prevail does kind of give that that imagery. Yeah. Um, so why why is the word gates used there instead of like yeah. the forces of hell? Yeah, or... I don't. I, I I'm not sure about that. Um, you know, uh, gates sometimes representing 
the powers that be that sit there and make decisions, but I don't know if that's accurate for this context. I, mm-hmm. I may not be able to because I a read answer. someone who said what you just said here. You know, the gates are an offensive, like they're like hit, death is on the offensive. Mm-hmm. But then I read gates, and I think, man, mm-hmm. like there's a dozen different words. That, yeah. You know, Jesus and Matthew so, could have put. Yeah, but maybe let me. I'm trying really hard to remember. I read a lot of that material, but sure. didn't, it didn't come up a lot yesterday. But yeah. I think gates, uh, gates of hell. Remember, is is the entryway into death. Yeah. So I think that's the that's the offensive part. Is death is claiming, death mm. is claiming lives regularly. I think would be right. maybe the better angle for us. And that that the fact that death is claiming people is not going to stop Mm -hmm. it's and and i think the better i would say shall not be victorious against is one of the ways in which uh the lexicon uh translated this uh the greek lexicon was doing this so death is not going to stop uh, god from gathering his kingdom citizens Mm -hmm. So that's probably the best way to say it. is death on the offensive. It is in the sense that it keeps claiming lives at a rapid right. pace. And that's a little bit why I was thinking about like if yeah. the doors to yeah. hell or oh. Hades are open, yeah. it's like people are walking through it yeah. or it's pulling them in. The, yeah. the grim reapers yeah, 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 yeah. creeping yeah, around. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah. Taking lives. Yeah. Because um, that's mm. what death does. Yeah. But this church that's yeah. being established is, yeah. won't won't succumb to that yeah that force. and Al- alan spoonauer caught me after church and said you know this is so comforting to him to see the the sure certain victory of the church and then he made another great comment about the keys if we get to that in a moment but for now you know he was saying this is such an encouragement because look at this this is unstoppable mm-hmm. this thing that we're a part of is is you know death is not going to stop it and death stops everything yeah. But not this. Right. Yeah. Death doesn't play favorites. No. It comes to us all, no. but yeah. it isn't victorious. No. It's not the final word. Uh, but you referenced there this loosening and binding, which, mm-hmm. man, it's like, what are we talking about I here? Know. We've I all know. heard a variety of different like things from other people. Yeah. From, a lot of you have. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Is this laws or you yeah. know, Old Testament stuff that's being bound? Is Peter? I know. You know, so you yeah. reference these keys and, and yeah. whatnot. So just, I'm going to give you a minute. To well, just uh, just to remember, you know, beyond Sunday, uh, making sure that you're realizing your place in the foundation. That was important because mm-hmm. I think what happens in Bible churches like ours, where there is a number of folks like Jonathan just referenced, what you just said, you know, there's people that have heard a lot of these interpretations through the years. That's good and bad for all of us. Mm-hmm. We come to this text and make sure that you see your place in the foundation as part of this, um, these living, st- uh, to use the Peter terminology from his own lips, from yeah. his own uh, pen. Uh, you know, we're, we're those living stones. So if, if you can see yourself in that foundation along with Peter, don't worry about giving Peter his prominent place. He, he doesn't have to be the Pope or any of that kind of stuff. And, uh, he's not infallible. We know that from <laughs> from uh, Galatians mm-hmm. where, you know, Paul has to take him aside and say, you're messing up. So we know he's not infallible in the scriptures. So don't worry about the extreme Roman Catholic stuff. That's what I was trying to say yesterday right. to us, right? Just put that aside a minute. And anybody who reads this without thinking of the extreme Roman Catholicism and their reading of this, you're going to come up with Peter's the rock. The whole pun is directed at this. That is... Uh, you know, we know that Jesus has the the place. Um, we know that the confession is critical. That's the whole point of this. But Peter's the one confessing this, and so uh, see yourself in the in the foundation. Trying to keep this quick to that minute, mm-hmm. and then uh, also, uh, uh, my goodness, make sure that you have you find your keys. Remember, I actually, I you know, I remembered enough to pull yeah. out a, a key and say, you know, make sure you have your key thinking that Mm -hmm. this is who we are. We talk about, you know, you guys have done such a great job with our faith family with, uh, you know, the, the, the core values and the the whole pursuing God, advancing his kingdom. This is who we are. And that involves uh, the uh, kingdom keys uh, working the locks of who gets in and who doesn't. So, Mm -hmm. you know, put yourself in the foundation as one of those living stones 
because you believe the confession, but also because you are a disciple maker in your context would mm-hmm. be a couple of ways just to say. And, and, and the binding and loosing, uh, by the way, just uh, just remember that uh, when you uh, when you bind uh, whatever you're binding on earth, that is uh, the person is bound in their sin because they've continued to reject the gospel which you've presented. The loosing, loosing uh, from their sins because they received the gospel that you gave them. Mm-hmm. The binding and loosing has to do with who gets in and who doesn't, and on what basis do they get in or don't get in. Yeah. Those are all gospel rules that God himself set up, not Peter. So is this like almost an evangelistic text in I th- some ways? I think or, it, okay. I, I really do. I, I you know, I, I kept, you know, I read, you, you know how this is, right? We read all yeah. kinds of material just to try to be ready for a teaching assignment yeah. and so, you know, I'm reading all this material, and the bottom line is with all of the stuff that we don't know, because all of these, I, I did want to say to you, all of these interpretations about who the rock is, mm-hmm. they all have their holes in it. I said this to the, the ladies' ministry with a Q&A about the book of the Revelation. You know, pick your favorite interpretation of a major thing in the Bible. All of the interpretations have holes in it. Right. It's not like any any of them are airtight. So... Um, but I just couldn't get away from the fact that, no, no, just if you can just remember that what's happening here is this uh, climactic confession happening in foreign soil mm-hmm. is a great uh, moment in Matthew's gospel that says, let's remember what we're doing when Jesus is about to, at the end of the gospel, he's going to turn this thing all over to to his disciples and they're going to carry on the work throughout the world. Yeah. And when you say foreign soil soil, you're talking about Caesarea Philippi. Yeah. yeah right. It's yeah. not happening in yeah. Jerusalem. Yeah. And it's one of the one of the authors, I forget which one, uh maybe um uh, what was his name? Maybe it was John Nolan that read uh, referenced something like you, you this is about as pagan a place as you could find in that ancient time. Yeah. So um and so last question here. Mm-hmm. Um with all of that in view that we just talked about these are the very first words about the church in the scriptures. Yeah. So what are we what are we learning about the initiation or the inception of the church in the in the gospels here that should inform Calvary Bible Church today? Yeah. I th- I think number 1 that we are a confessing community. Mm-hmm. Um we have to continually uh affirm that confession mm-hmm. of who Jesus, Jesus is, his death, uniqueness, yeah, which is so clear, right, in 21 to, yeah, to 23. Right. I mean, that's to as do. clear as mm-hmm. tw- uh, 21 to 20, uh, 21 and 22 are the clearest we have. I mean, he just spells it, spells it out. And Peter got it because that was, the, you know, the rebuking came as a result of that. I, I think just making sure that we continue to confess Christ. When we gather on Sunday, for instance, this is beyond Sunday, so we want the confession to remain. But I think Sundays in particular, these are, conf- you know, this is, um, someone, uh, one of my friends called it, we're always in covenant renewal on Sunday. That's a good way to put it. You also could put it now in light of Matthew 16. This is confession renewal mm-hmm. every Sunday for us. Yeah. And we don't recite the creeds every Sunday like some do. And I like the creeds. Yeah. Uh, we ha- Actually, we had one up, uh, a little snippet of one, didn't we? Did, did we not put that creed up? Uh, Nicene Creed. Not yesterday. No way. I forgot that slide. My. Oh, that's a shame. Yeah. We've sung creeds. Yeah, you know, in some of our songs. Yeah, I, I think it doesn't matter whether I forgot the slide or not. But that's yeah. a bummer because uh, I wanted to just give a snippet of that Nicene Creed, which is eighty three twenty five, I think. Uh, so mm-hmm. fourth century, early fourth century. Um, but I think Sundays for us are confession renewal services, where we come together, we confess faith in the, in the unique identity of Jesus Christ. I think that's one thing. Mm-hmm. The second thing is, and this was the quick, the quick uh, minute, remember, if you, if you were there uh, yesterday, I wanted to let the Welcome to the Faith family class and the Next Level folks make the connection between the binding and loosing in this text and the one that's coming in two chapters from Matthew 18, because 
because what what happens is we're not, we're not only a confessing community, but the implications of that confession have to be lived out in the church for us to stay, which was the, the I, and I know those mm-hmm. were quick minutes, but they were critical minutes for a good a couple of cohorts that we've had, and so part of the uh, part of the uh, implications for the church is that since we we meet based on the confession yep. we have to maintain that confession in our lifestyle or else the binding and the loosing happens now with respect to church discipline mm-hmm. something like that so yeah. if you have if if either of us god forbid if we continue to sin without repentance yep. then then we're on the receiving end according to 1 Timothy 5 for instance mm-hmm. there's a method to deal with to dealing with us who mm-hmm. won't stop sinning because the confessional standards have to be maintained in the church. So there's a couple of real strong mm-hmm. implications for who is this gathered community, the, uh, the ecclesia, which that Greek term, which any, any of these readers of Matthew, they are, they are learning that uh, from, uh, through the lens of their Old Testament uh, the called out people of the Old Testament. Mm-hmm. And so there's continuity, uh, with the people of God as we move into this time yeah. period. And so all of that arguing about, you know, uh, I will build my church and and that doesn't happen until, I, you know, I would say that's happening officially in Acts 2, let's say, or mm-hmm. something like that. I'm okay with that. Um, but as far as this identity, this community is, these are people who belong to Jesus, but they've also been transformed. Yeah. I don't know if that's helping what you were after. But. Yeah, well, and all of that points to the importance of the local church, the you know the bride of Christ, yeah. and being you know born here with Jesus saying. Mm. And you pointed out yesterday, it's not Peter who's doing the building; Jesus is no, the builder, and he calls it his own. Yeah, um, and just I think for us too to continue to fight the cultural. Uh, movement of pulling out of church and the decreasing mm. of the importance in, mm. in the lives of people and families. Yeah. Um, because That's spirituality can making. be gained yeah. uh, away from the church. Yeah, yeah but, the privatized version. Yeah. I mean, I think uh, in I mean, a sermon from a couple of years ago, I, I was talking about this, and mm. you can't say that you lo- are a taco lover. Mm and not go to taco restaurants right. or make tacos right, right, at right, home, right? Yeah. Right? yeah. Um, y- you have to go to these places. Mm-hmm. So you can't say yeah. that you're a Christian and be a follower of Jesus if you don't love the bride. Oh, my. And be a part of what's happening. And uh, yeah, it's, you're, it's, a, it's a great point. It's such an important institution. Yeah. Um, and we just covered it with this Next Level group and wrapped up last night. And that was a part of the conversation. Oh, yeah, because this whole month for them, that's right. It's been about the church. And I think... Um, yeah, I, I and I just want to say to you know to you, the discussions at the leadership level about this, about the importance of church, helping people realize this, giving uh, greater emphasis to official membership. All of this discussion has come about because this is Christ's body. Yeah. So I, I appreciate the leaders that have worked really hard with us through the years. I, I would say, what, what do you think, two years maybe, the last couple of years in particular? Yeah, a year and a half. Yeah, at mm-hmm. least, right? So for us, I think that, you know, just so you know that behind the scenes when we talk, we really want we really want to continue to swim upstream against this tendency to devalue the church but still, you know— uh, confess faith in Christ. I mean, mm-hmm. we want that to be reversed. And so, um, yeah, we don't leaders... want to go beyond what the Bible says. No, 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 you no, know, no. Or to get into legalism, like no. we talked about earlier, no. in Matthew, but it's important. And how can we do that? And yeah, a little teaser, I guess we've talked about in 2025, you know, kind of unrolling, uh, or revealing some of these things. So mm. we don't have it Mm. you know, developed enough that I can tell you exactly Mm-mm. what's going to happen. But yeah. uh, like Randy just said, the membership piece is something that we have talked about and we yeah. continue to kind of double down on because of these, a reaction to the culture. Yeah. And, and one other thing too, you know, I think one of the positive trends here in our faith family has been there are young, there are young families mm-hmm. and young individuals who are 
are catching this. They are believing in the importance of Christ's church in this local, uh, you know, what would you call it? Example of it. Yeah. It's not the right word, but, uh, you know, they're catching this. And so whenever these young folks are younger than us, when they're saying, uh, hey, we want to be a part of this, this is a good sign for the future of Calvary Bible Church. Yeah. So I'm delighted, you know, both for the leadership's emphasis through the last couple of years, and then also seeing this as as younger people in particular continue to join, uh, sign officially, and so forth. So Yeah. I'm not sure I love the fact that you just lumped me in with, you know, you as far as age-wise, so people younger than us. I know. Good I know, but that's what's Am happening. Am I there? Am I yeah, there? you're close. I thought I'd give you the benefit of the doubt and put you right on that good side. Maybe no one's listening anymore. It's been a long <laughs> That person <episode>. is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good. Uh, I think that covers the I bet the my mom is still, your mom, my mom, I bet yeah. they're still listening. Thank you, Mrs. Pelton, for sticking with us. <laughs> and Mrs. Kaufman. Yeah, good. All right, that should do it. Uh, appreciate you guys tuning in. Uh, questions, you can email them into podcast at cbcmj.com. Randy will be here. I'll be here. Jokes keep coming. And oh hopefully the the fun conversation about the sermons have mercy have mercy on us all right we love you guys and we'll see you on sunday thanks again for joining us on today's episode and remember our sunday sermons are meant to lead us to a life of worship beyond sunday